Imagine you had a universe which was a Googleplex meters across, okay? So a big universe. Then that's very big. And if you actually traveled far enough in that universe, you would start to see repetitions. You would start to see exact copies of yourself. Today we've got a Google. A Google? A Google. Oh, as in the website? Kind of, not spelt the same. It's spelt G double O G O L. 10 to the power of 100. So imagine that that's a one with a hundred zeros after it. And it was sort of, it came about because it was uh, a guy called Kasner, um, who was a mathematician. He was also uh, very famous in cosmology. Now it wasn't him that came up with the name. He just thought of a really big number. He thought, what's a big number? One with a hundred zeros. And he wanted to sort of explain infinity and he wanted to come up with a very big number that, um, that wasn't really big at all compared to infinity. And he actually asked his nephew, his nine-year-old nephew, what's a good name to call this number? His nephew came up with the, uh, with the word Google. But it, 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 it's, it's quite a big number. I don't think it's that big a number, but it's quite a big number. I mean, to put it into, into perspective, um, you might ask yourself, well, OK, how many, how many grains of sand could you fit inside this room? OK, you think that's a lot, right? That's going to be a lot of grains of sand. It's only about 50 billion. Not that much. So you might ask, well, let's ask something more dramatic. Well, how many, how many particles are there in the universe? OK, now that's 10 to the 80, 10 with a 1 with 80 zeros after it. That's how many particles there are in the universe. So a Google is bigger than that. And you could ask yourself, OK, well, how many grains of sand could I fit in the universe? Say the universe was full of just grains of sand. How many grains of sand can I fit in the universe? And that would be about 10 to the 90, so one with 90 zeros after it. It's quite a big number, but, it, but it's not that big. There's, there's certainly stuff that's a lot bigger than hey, that. You say, you're saying it's not that big a number, and yet all these things that we think of as big, like the size of the universe and atoms in the universe and particles, aren't even touching it. So it must be, it must be big. Well, yeah, OK, but I can think of something that is bigger than it. That's physical that you can think of physically. So, so if you take the, the smallest volume in the universe, something like which is a Planck volume, so it's basically a little cube that's its radius is a Planck length, which is 10 to the minus 35 meters. Okay, and you see how many of them you can fit in the observable universe, and you get about 10 to the 183. So that's a one with 183 zeros after it. So that is bigger than a Google. Okay, so. Google's aren't that impressive, so, uh, <laughs> because we can, we can think of things that are bigger. He then thought, well, what's a bigger number than a Google? And for that, he took 10 and raised it to this power, the power of a Google, 10 to the 100. So this is taking 10 and times in it by 10 and 10 and 10 and 10 and 10 and times in it Google amount of times. And this number is called a Googleplex. We start writing down a, a, a Googleplex, OK? And let's suppose, well, we're writing on a piece of paper here, but let's suppose we actually tried to write it down on, on particles. So for each particle, we're going to write down a zero. So first particle, we write down a zero. Second particle, we write down a zero. And we carry on doing that on every particle in the universe, and we still would not be able to write down a Googleplex. It's too big a number. And there's something else remarkable about, uh, about the Googleplex. So this, this, I find this astonishing. Imagine you had a universe. This sort of emphasizes how big a Googleplex is. Imagine you had a universe which was a Googleplex meters across. OK? So a big universe. And in some models of, of internal inflation and things like that, you do get universes which, which could be as big as this. So we have a universe which is a Googleplex meters across. Then that's very big, and if you actually traveled far enough in that universe, you would start to see repetitions. You would start to see exact copies of yourself. Now, you might think, what the hell am I talking about here, uh, Brady? But, but, you know, let's take you, Brady. Let's, uh, let's ask how many quantum states can describe the, the volume that you occupy, OK? Right, the number of quantum states that can occupy that volume, the total number, is... You can work this out. It's something to do with entropy and black holes and stuff like that. But you can work it out. And it is 10 to the 10 to the 70. 
that, that's a number of different quantum states, different ways that you could actually put together that, that volume of space. So let's say, so that number is less than a Googleplex. Why so, so the space I'm in could be me, it could be you, it could be yeah. a dog, it could be a vacuum, yes. it could be anything. It could be all those particles arranged in any number of different ways. The particles might not even be there. But all those possible states, given that volume that you occupy, the number that you could, uh, the, n the number of possible states you could have is 10 to the 10 to the 70. Big number. Not as big as a Googleplex, but 10 to the Google is equal to 10 to the 10 to the 100. Okay, so this number is clearly less than this number. Okay, so you occupy roughly about a meter cubed of space. There's that many different possible states that you could, you could be in. Okay, so if you go this many meters away from yourself, you know, you would start to expect to see repetitions. So that means that if you're in a universe which is so big, it's as big as a Googleplex meters across, then eventually you would start to see repetitions of those sort of those volumes of one meter cubed. So just by chance, I will run into another arrangement of atoms that matches me. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Matches you exactly. And then you know you go even bigger, and you would start to see sort of you know, entire un entire observable universe is re repeated. Uh, so this is truly remarkable. I think I think the fact that you you would go there and see your doppelganger uh, if you went far enough away in a, in a Googleplexian universe. Um, I think, I think it's is just, just sort of emphasizes how, how big that number really is. But the size of the universe is, is uh, 10 to the 26 meters, sort of all cubed. That's the size of the universe. So this number is you know, tiny compared to that. So there's probably not another me in this universe. Probably not. But if, if we live in a, a universe which is a Googleplex across, then there probably is.